people are part of nature. We can either protect it or can become its biggest enemy. How do we maintain the natural balance in the age of global urbanization? What do we know about the wild inhabitants of forests, steppes and mountains of Kazakhstan? We'll talk about the nature, find out incredible details of life of plants and animals of Kazakhstan, reflect on the place humanity occupies in the world. All of it in the television project Talk to Nature. Two hundred and fifty kilometers of excellent road from Almaty. The snow-capped mountain peaks are seen in the window, followed by the green step, and finally, in about six hours, we drive into the kingdom of Semi Desert. Nothing catches the eye for many miles until, all of a sudden, a river. This one is not ordinary little river, it's deep, full flow river with stream crossings and even a bridge. The famous Abzharsky or Kunaevsky bridge is the major landmark on the road. The construction of the bridge was initiated in the 70s by Din Mohamed Ahmedovich Kunaev, the leader of Kazakh SSR back then. By the way, he is native to these places and could see perfectly well the inconveniences experienced by the residents of two neighboring districts, Kurta and Balhash. They had to cross the river on boats in the summer and in the winter walk on frozen lake surface. The springtime was the worst. The ice was melting and crumbling while it was still too early for boats. With the modern bridge proudly towering above the river, they no longer had to worry about these problems. The river Li is one of the deep rivers of Kazakhstan. It begins in the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region of China, passes through the territory of our country and flows into the Endoraic Lake Balhash. For as long as humanity exists, people settled along river banks, despite the fact that it was dangerous. There was constant risk of flooding. However, it was much easier to survive on the river. Big barges loaded with firewood were sailing on this river back in the 70s. Back then, the heating in Almata was heavily relying on burning sex oil. At present, there is practically no shipping, and people are increasingly attracted by water tourism. Honestly, is there anything better than the rapid current under the pedal, seagull cries and the unity with nature? That is probably why dozens of like-minded people rush to the water every spring. The river brings them together. Its rapid current, breakers and whirlpools, sharp turns and timid green reeds on the banks. Also, cormorants on dry branches or wild olives over the water and elegant kingfishers nesting in thickets along river banks. Here, a person can merge with nature without violating its quiet order, without roaring car engines exhausts and dripping engine oils all around. Edward Isaev, professional instructor of tourism on water, leads groups through the raging mountain rapids ranked at fifth category of complexity. However, kayaking on the River Lee is not as hard. It's ranked as Category 1. According to the experienced instructor, with all necessary precautions, the river is safe even for schoolchildren and pensioners. Water brings people together. That's for sure. It's somehow uncomfortable, a little dirty. But friendships built along the way last for many years. У меня есть здесь ребята, которые ходят с 12 лет. Some guys in my team began at the age of 12. Now one of them comes with his wife and two kids, teenagers already, 17, 18 years old. Isn't it dangerous? You know, river is river, water. There are risks. You have to be very careful, me especially. I'm constantly on the watch. Every day, every hour, every minute. Sometimes little children can be out of control. Parents are watching them, of course. I make them wear life jackets even when they're just playing on the bank of the river. In case someone falls into the water, wearing life jacket can make a difference. 
потому что если даже человек упал в воду, он спас лет держит. What is so special about water tourism? There is a beauty in experiencing the wilderness. We visit areas with no sign of human activity. There's no one there. We only see each other and we talk. You know, when we gather at the table at the end of the day, we share our troubles and joys, and we know that this will remain between us. Этот человек уже никому ничего не расскажет. Я могу поделиться своим горем или бедой или счастьем. Это останется вот между нами. Each year you visit New Lake. Does the location change at all? Yes, it definitely changes, but we are able to determine these changes from experience, like the shift of a river channel, a 180 degree turn to the opposite direction. We begin to think where this channel could go, and logically we find the route we need. What kind of fish can you see in the water? There were times when we could catch a fish as heavy as 90-100 kilos, bigger than me. It was a catfish, an old catfish. We catch and release the fish. There is a lake here, we call it Kalucha, prickly. And we don't allow children to swim there because catfish living there are very large. One time the catfish caught a pelican right before our eyes. Edward Ismagulovic teaches at the university. He works with people all his life, at the university behind the teacher's desk and here at the folding tourist table. For many years, he's been taking people to the mountain hikes and now he can do comparisons. Water tourism, says he, is a collective sport, unlike mountain climbing, where athletes work in a bunch on the water, all stand for and help one another. For example, duty in the camp. The team works closely together in three shifts, eight people in each. When the fleet lands, persons on duty set up filled table and chairs, make a fire, cook, pour out tea and wash up after a meal. In general, they make common work, but everybody is responsible for setting up their own tents. Итак, so, three-person kayak time and three. These are mainly used for water tourism. Two, a maximum of three people, can fit in this boat with about 50-60 kilos of additional load. It is a scanty boat with only one pedal. Kayaks came to us from the north, from the northern peoples of the Aleuts, the Kayak Eskimos. They were covered with skins of walrus and seals. These days, other materials are used. To pollens and PVC. Kayaks are very durable and they weigh in a little. The charm of a kayak trip is that they don't produce any sound. It means there is a chance to raise a flock of swans or run into a herd of wild boars at a watering or scary raw deer. Many exciting adventures are waiting for us along the way. We may come across a huge catfish in shallow waters weighing 100 kilos or even more than that. However, you need to be careful with fish like that. The credo of the pelican tea is clean up after yourself. That's why everyone, including children, collects the trash, not just theirs, but also belonging to some negligent vacationers who had left it behind. They either bury it on spot or burn it down. But the weather doesn't always favor the travelers. During the rain, tourists wear raincoats or cloaks. Sometimes there's a strong wind. 
Imagine getting stuck here during the storm. They need to set up a camp, light a fire and spend a night in wet clothes. But they can get over all this. They will remember the most remarkable moments, having friends around, the charm of Johnny, sunrises and sunsets. I believe that water tourism has a great future. Anyone can swim on such kayak, young and old. In 1907, one of the German doctors crossed the Atlantic on a similar kayak. He did this in order to prove it possible to survive after a shipwreck if you keep your self-control. In general, this kayak holds up to three degrees. It is designed to move on oars in reeds. Although there are also kayaks meant for sailing, it's even possible to equip kayaks with electric or gasoline engines. But in that case, the whole point of such a journey is lost. It's hard to imagine someone choosing to inhale gasoline vapors rushing through the river when you could move in silence, walking the oars, breathing fresh air and feeling the silence of the morning and not to least important, feeling the support of friends. Right now, we've got a very experienced rower, so to say, the master of sports and water tourism, Vildan Fazeljanov. I prefer to get away from the city bustle, listen to birds and enjoy the quiet sunsets. This is incomparable. To understand this, you need to plunge into it. There are no two identical rafts. Even if it's the same route, the people are different. The flow direction is changing, the level of the river. I like that. If it were not safe, I would not take my daughter with me. Мне нравится. Ну, если бы это не было безопасно, я бы не взял бы дочку и школьницу. У нас ходят и первоклассники, и очень взрослые пожилые, я бы сказал, люди, пенсионеры. If you look at the map of the delta of the river Li, you could see just how vast it is. The channels in the reeds are like blood vessels. It's easy to get lost and swim into a dead end. That is why, starting from the 80s, team leaders would make records on a sea map in which they kept track of all turns they were taking. Safety comes first. We live in different times. Modern travelers can easily afford support from space at any given moment, not only during routing. In the past, this was considered a fantasy. Does GPS help you along the way? Yes, it is indispensable. We also have radio sets. All this modern technology is very helpful. We take GPS, not just one, but several of those, so that they are duplicated. Everyone has different maps. We compare them, choosing the optimal route and channels by which we can pass from point A to point B. It's a fish day today at the Kayakish camp. The menu includes the fish soup uha, made of snake head. Interesting fact, our reservoirs are stocked with grass carp, big head carp and common carp, but the number of these fish is still decreasing. On the other hand, this fish, snake head, was never introduced here on purpose, and its number keeps growing. The weight of this fish also increases. This year, Balhash fish catchers recorded the weight of separate specimen reaching 12 kilos. Where did the snake heads come from and how did they become the favorite trophy of underwater hunters? This predatory fish is non-native invasive species. It reproduces very aggressively and devours all other fish on their way. The population of snake heads is subject to control. The homeland of snake head is Lake Hanka in the Far East. 
But over the last decades, the species has come to Central Asia and has actively bred here. Nowadays, it inhabits many reservoirs of neighboring Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan and Tajikistan, becoming a rather common species here as well. This fish has terrifying jaws. Their bite force is 20 kilograms per square centimeter. Also, the snake head protects its fry. They form some sort of cloud around their mother and no one is able to attack this fish. Please note the color and shape. It has such fins above and below its body. These fins allow snakeheads to dive pretty deep. However, snakehead's favorite habitat is thick algae, where it can catch small fish and frogs. There are the average snakeheads. By the way, it proved to be rather delicious. Our journey continues. It is always interesting to watch children and adolescents from the city adapting the field. One of the members of the expedition, Alina, is a 10th grade student. She's already an experienced tourist. Traveling from early childhood, she accompanied her parents in their trips to all the mountains and lakes in the area. She's accustomed to the life of a camper. This is her second journey on kayaks. The first time was scary, but she liked it. The river beckons even more than the mountains, and her father is there for her to give advice and help if needed. What did your friends say when you told them you are off kayaking for 10 days? They thought I'm crazy and asked me how would I survive without the internet, without a toilet, without water? How will I sleep in the tent? And I told them that traveling is an important part of my life that my parents got me into and that I simply can't live without it. So the kayaks have departed. 30 brave travelers will pass 300 kilometers and reach the Lake Balhash. In the meantime, we'll observe the life of the desert right next to the river. Millions of years ago, this was the ocean floor. These days, the water here is a rare exception. Hundreds of kilometers around us are just highless island desert on salt marshes and clay, and sand dunes with small intermingled salty sand flowing between the fingers. The moisture in these places comes in form of snow and is only in abundance during winter. As soon as it melts, the soil is quickly dried by dry winds. Spring, summers and autumns are usually extremely arid. However, this didn't prevent local plants from adapting to the local conditions. A real colorful spring in the Kazakh steppes is very short. No wonder that the beloved tulips belong to the ephemeroids. Maybe because their beauty is ephemeral, or maybe because their vegetation period is very short. They blossom only for two weeks. After four years of preparing to do so, to spring out and bloom and leave off spring. Can you believe this? Over here, we've got pepper saxifrage, known here as Merkovic. The steppe is still dry, but in the thickets of these plants grow white step mushrooms. Let's check this one. No luck. It's okay. We'll keep looking. This is an excellent example of symbiosis when one plant helps another. Step mushrooms hide in the shadow of the pepper saxifrage fertilizing it generation after generation. Step mushrooms hide in the shadow of the pepper saxifrage, fertilizing it generation after generation. A common inhabitant of these places is the steppe tortoise. Every part of this animal's body is adapted for life in the semi-desert. Just look at these four legs, massive claws made to dig sand. And the shell is a great defense unit, given how slow the tortoises are. This reptile spends more than nine months underground. In the remaining two and a half months, they mainly feed to gain weight and take care of the offspring. They've got 60 days to do everything. The rest of the year it spends in the hole. Let's let this young lady go. Let her be off to do her tortoise things. We witnessed the revival of water tourism on the rivers of Kazakhstan, traveled along the Blue Road and briefly talked about some inhabitants of the Talkum Desert in the Balhaj region. 
we returned home and are already in preparation for our next trips. Summer is ahead. This is the best time for cool trips and new experiences.